today, we have a wonderful Star Mountain tradition that started about five years ago. It's a tradition that we set on this particular Sunday every year, the Sunday of the baptism of the Lord, because for us as Christians, this is where our journey begins. In the waters of baptism. But our journey does not end here. This is just a beginning. And one of the most awesome gifts that the church has for people of faith around the world is the ability for us to gather together as community and to share our stories with each other about how our walk with God is going, where it's taking us, where we see God, how we see God, how God is making a difference in our lives. Because when we share one with another, we support one another, we encourage one another, we inspire one another in our own walks of faith. So about five years ago, we at Star Mount instituted this Sunday where we recognize that our journey begins with God as an opportunity to have members of the congregation share their faith stories with each other so that we can support one another along our way because we know that our baptism does not fully end until we reach uh, God's presence in the life to come. And so this morning, uh, we have been blessed to have two members of our congregation who have stepped up and will be sharing their faith this morning, Cindy Dixon and Slade Lewis. And so sit back and listen and be inspired by their faith. And uh, as we remember that we are all baptized and are all claimed and have a relationship with God and Jesus Christ. I was depending on the wall to get up. Oh, well. <laughs> Have to start like a teacher. Okay. How many of you were born into a Presbyterian family? Okay. How many were baptized Presbyterian? Yeah. How many have you, of you have spent your entire life Presbyterian? Oh, there are more of us than I thought. Well, I'm one of those who answers yes to all three. There are a couple of other things you need to know before I go on. I am a control freak, and I'm very visual. So I'd like to explain my faith journey in kind of imagined snapshots of who I am and where I've been. First picture would show a scrawny little me, about nine, at, or seven, or six, whatever, at the feet of an Alabama aunt teaching children's Sunday school and in the Statesville Vacation Bible School for two weeks every summer and watching them move their stories across the flannel board. Don't we all remember those? Uh, a little older, I am nine. It's Asheville. And we children are going into the sanctuary before Sunday school every Sunday for a short sermon, often from a book called Birds of Wington and a hymn. And that's where I remember my first sermon comment. Me third, uh, God first, others second, me third. How many of you have a first sermon that struck you? Then picture me a teenager in Gaffney, South Carolina. Yep, good old peach on I-85. And Gaffney is a small southern town. Once my St. Louis cousins couldn't believe when they visited, and we walked downtown and spoke to everyone, most by name. It wasn't a roaring recommendation for nightlife for a teenager. So picture us going to each other's revival for entertainment. Uh, not wonderful, but it gave a broadening experience of what things were believable in people's lives. Next picture, I'm in the high school chorus. 
In the spring, we'd sing at a different little country church every Sunday night. Most were Baptist. I was one of the taller people, and my feet were in good shape then, so I wore heels. And I stood on the back row over the baptismal font. <sighs> I probably spent more time worrying I would fall into the font than I would listening to the preacher but I still got some experience of other people's faiths and what were things that other people believed. Picture me in Sunday school, big part of my faith. My dad was my Sunday school teacher. He was a very quiet man and very strong in his faith. And the things that he shared from his World War II experiences as part of the challenges to his faith were important. I particularly feel his presence during communion he was so respectful and so quiet and so intense about that. A very big picture from my life. Another Gaffney picture. It was there I found what Catherine recently referred to as my thin place, the place where heaven and earth meet. I found Montreat. We went at least twice a year with some kind of church gathering. Once you got through that rock arch, you were in God's place. Now, I remember the first time being struck by Lake Susan and it's don't walk on the water sign. But I remember even more that sense that you were in the presence of God just being there. Oh, I enjoyed the community spirit with icebreakers, small group discussions, services in the auditorium. And then luckily coming to UNCG allowed me to continue the special times there. That added a picture of all night bridge games. But it wasn't just the social, it was the sense that there we'd find not answers, but needed questions about what we believed, and maybe a few answers to the whys. UNCG's pictures include a variety of ways to explore with other Christians, how to relate to our God-given gifts, the world we lived in, and that in the 60s was an interesting place, our place in our families, our new relationships with those who'd become more special in our lives. Yes, I met Stan there. Picture him coming up to what we call Presby House looking for one girl and finding me instead. <laughs> Picture me serving there as moderator and indeed at the state level for college students. To be part of a group of seriously committed Christians who are trying hard to live faithfully was a tremendous blessing. Many of us have continued to keep in touch and support each other even through our later life experiences. Post-college life. Next picture, Stan and I are getting married. Extra picture here, we were the first in the Shelby Presbyterian Church to use the then new contemporary marriage service. It was the regular order of worship, even including a homily. One lady coming through our receiving line said we were the most married couple she'd ever seen. <sighs> a longer than four minute service was a real shock to their systems. Stan and I have not been through a lot of hardships that others have. We've seen some snags, but no major hurdles. I can't give you a blinding light, a special epiphany, but I do remember the first Sunday we came back to church after Bill was born. And those of you who were here then would say when Billy was born. I remember sitting there and it hit me. Here we were with a new son with high hopes for him already. And God had a son he gave us, knowing at the beginning what was going to happen to him. That still has the power beyond imagining to give me chills and to know that I don't have to worry about what was going, excuse me, going to happen in that way for my son. I don't have to be politically correct to know that giving one's child could be a daughter so we were equally excited and blessed when Libby came into our lives. Oh, and then to become a grandparent. Ah, God's gifts and God's continuity. Snapshots from Starmount, helping with confirmation, immediate challenges to my faith. On what do I base it? How do I explain it? Ah, enjoying the music for a while as a participant and now as a receiver of that wonderful surround sound from where I sit. Good acoustics, but that's the best place, right where I am. Then writing notes to visitors, trying to explain what a wonderful blessing the sense of family is. If you all remember from when you were a child, the little thing about the church is not a building, 
The church is not a steeple. The church is a people. And that's who we are. We really do exemplify that. The church is not a building. There's another song line that has stuck with me. More from a little earlier on. Put your hand in the hand of the man fits this congregation. You hold each other's and my hand when some need is felt. We hold each other's hands often, literally and figuratively, and that swells my heart and bolsters my faith. A few miscellaneous shots, and I warned George I was going to say this. One time George was talking to a group about some really heavy subjects in the Wednesday night services, but then he ended up with talking about God's sense of humor. Why else would we have giraffes? Think about it. Okay, another snapshot. A friend handed me a book and said, read this. It's called Who Stole My Church? I am very steeped in tradition. I love the church and its traditions and knowing what's coming next and, and kind of how things go. Oh, did I get my ste to toes stepped on when I read that. Give it a try if you haven't read it. Many others of you have challenged me to my faith. Next to the last shot. Me working on last week's Sunday school lesson from Philippians. As I did my research, I found two quotes that really struck me. One is from a songwriter named Jennifer Rothschild who wrote, God is sovereign. He has a plan to exalt and magnify Christ. If you're a Christian believer, then your whole life has been swept up and into this story. Your life becomes a part of God's plan. So when stuff happens, it isn't just stuff happening. God is at work. Trust that God is bigger than your circumstances. It's about what God does and is doing. Your circumstances are the very things that God will use to advance the gospel. So we can, like Paul, rejoice. I believe that. One other writer named Ben Wall noted that Paul was so secure in his understanding of God's plan that he had an attitude of relaxation. Paul knew God is in control and simply had an attitude of relaxation. As a control freak, that's very hard for me, but it resonated and I really wanted to think, I'm going to keep this in my heart. Sorry. I've been truly blessed. I trust I can relax and rejoice in the everyday happenings as a part of God's plan. Almost all of my pictures are family and church related. Almost none come from my 30 plus years in public education or even the eight I spent in childcare. I was surprised when I realized that. My last shot. Picture me hopefully walking daily with God. Do I take time to acknowledge that? Where am I in that journey? Hopefully growing in knowledge and commitment, sharing my faith. I haven't arrived, but I'd like to think we continue that walk together, hand in hand with each other and the man. Thank you.